I really didn't want to do this, but I think it's high time we address the Theo in the room. For the most time, when Theo popped up on my timeline on Twitter, now X, I didn't even know what to think of the dude. But I do give him his flowers for his meteoric rise as a content creator in the JavaScript ecosystem. Dude is doing an amazing job. We've had our fights and disagreements, beginning with the whole Next.js is a backend framework thing. And then another, and over time, I kept trying to, you know, to be open-minded because it's fine to have strong opinions. Hey, I have strong opinions too. And I respect that. But there's a fine line between being strongly opinionated and just completely wrong. And don't get me wrong. Occasionally, it does say stuff a large group of folks in the JavaScript and web dev ecosystem agrees on. But you know, even a broken clock is right twice a day. But anywho, the last show was this video. There is no Laravel or Rails for JavaScript. So said Theo. And I was like, you know, fuck it. No more benefits of the doubt. I'm just going to take him for face value. And I want to address some things he failed to mention in that video. There is an equivalent Rails-like framework in the JavaScript ecosystem, and it's sales. And yes, sales is not shiny, but it does what a good tech does, which is to stay in the background and allow you to be awesome. So understand, Theo is a TypeScript and React fine boy, right? So I don't think that video was unbiased. And who are we kidding? Most takes are biased. When it looks like a particular take is a general sentiment of the JavaScript ecosystem, then I don't like it. In the video, Theo mentioned Adonis, which used TypeScript. Mm -hmm. Redwood, which is a React framework. Creativity Stack, which is Theo's Next.js boilerplate. And he said, these are the equivalent to Rails or Laravel in JavaScript. I don't think there's something wrong with that list that sales wasn't mentioned. And I get it. Of course, sales won't get a mention, despite the fact that it's over 12 years old and super stable and at 1.x and is used at Postman, Paystack, Fully Device Management, and at SalesConf Africa 2024, we saw a young fintech startup using it to ship in months with a lean team doing $65 million in transaction volumes and at $60 per month for server costs. And even when he wanted to mention an alternative to React, he mentioned Solid and Svelte and not Vue. That's quite interesting. And of course, Vue won't get a mention, despite its user base being bigger than that of Solid and Svelte combined. Curious, quite curious. What about Marco or Medio? Why didn't they get a mention in the whole full stack story of JavaScript? It's quite interesting. So now let's move on to the latest drama. <laughs> In fact, I think the JS boys has been on a roll, really. You gotta hand it to them. First of all, starting with Gunning for Laravel and now Rays. And it's always a sad sight to see. They make me almost regret going full stack JavaScript, but I'm glad I've got sales. Here's the thing I hate to see a web development ecosystem where we all build the same and have similar tastes. The Rails folk like to send HTML over the wire, and that's fine. It works for them. Let them use what works for them. It almost feels like any time the JavaScript ecosystem is bored with finding more ways to reactively render our rectangles, we look to our cousins like Rails and Laravel and just start shit up. It's sad. Because there have been more innovations from both Rails and Laravel in terms of providing a holistic and free approach to ship products than in the JavaScript ecosystem. And that should tell us something. And no, I'm not talking about startup selling developer tools. I'm talking about free tools that, em that empowers the everyday web developer, the everyday web dev agency. Take Inertia, for example, which came out of the Laravel world, which quite frankly, I am embarrassed that it didn't come out from the JavaScript ecosystem because that was the whole promise of Node, one language across the stack. The JavaScript ecosystem needs to grow the fuck up and stop throwing a tantrum when someone don't build the way they approve. So here's the thing. Theo doesn't speak for all JavaScript developers, and there still exist some of us 
that want the Rails like experience. In fact, I so crave that and sales save me. And I've said this before, if not for sales, I wouldn't be confident doing full stack JavaScript today. So yes, what you should take from this video, Theo doesn't speak for all of the JavaScript ecosystem. He gives his opinions as a fanboy. And that's fine. But that's what you should often see his takes as. Fanboy opinions. So take them with a grain of salt. Scratch that. Take them with a bucket of salt.